Good morning, Lionhearts. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion and Jaw. We're going out for our first walk in the morning and we have a doozy of a show for you today. This is gonna be great. I'll tell you about it as we walk. And what's up, co-host? Many of you know that I've been doing this daily vlog almost 600 days in a row without missing a day. And it all started from basically me experimenting in stand-up comedy. I had been going to the comedy store for about three years every day, and it all started with a friend of mine named Sam Tripoli. He's a great comedian, he invited me out, I got hooked to the place, started going, and then even though I wasn't really interested in being a stand-up comic, I loved going, I loved being in that atmosphere, but I never liked the repetition of it. So when I tried it out, Sam was the guy who was kind of my mentor, and I could run my jokes past him, and he would say, ah, change this, or maybe try this. When I decided not to do it anymore and I went to YouTube, I told Sam why I was doing it and what I hoped to get. I said, I'll get to do something different every day and I just think there's a community on there. He actually thought it was such a good idea. He started a YouTube channel and his channel is pretty much at the same point mine is. He's got roughly the same amount of followers. He uh, has actually changed what he's doing over the time and now has this really great conspiracy channel. Now Sam has been so supportive of what I'm doing and seen the, I guess in his mind, what a great idea it was to actually give the people that like what you're doing something daily and something that's out of a scripted form like his stand-up act can be. He gives them a little bit, you know, more to his personality. And so every time he tells somebody about how you know, his fan base has grown or whatever, he always says, Jordan got me into this early on and uh, he decided to do something very special for me. Tonight, Sam is taping his brand new comedy special. He's doing two tapings of it tonight. Not only did he invite me, but he said, I'm taping it at the Viper Room. Would you like to come and vlog the Viper Room? I was like, are you kidding? Full access today, and not only am I gonna show you the infamous bathroom that River Phoenix drank the speedball in. I'm gonna show you the inside of the club. There's a lot of stories associated to this club going way back. And we're actually gonna make a mini little documentary about what it's like for a comedian to film his comedy special. We're gonna show you the day leading up to a comedy special taping. So Days with Jordan the Lion can begin now. And that means this guy is gonna get a hangout with Pollyanna today. So today is all about the Viper Room. Good day, Batman. Now a friend of mine and big time viewer of this channel was actually there the night that River Phoenix died. Then he passed out on the sidewalk and he was actually performing on that stage that River Phoenix was trying to perform on that night. So. Unfortunately, he lives about four hours away, so he probably won't be a part of this vlog. Who knows? He may text me today and say, you know what? I'm coming down for it. But if he can't, he actually sent me a pretty lengthy text telling me uh, details and descriptions of what he remembers from that night. And I decided as a change of pace today, I'm actually going to go to my old church, not the one that I've been going to for the last few years. I decided I just want to see what my old one's like. I'm going to be uh, heading over to the Viper Room and they're going to be loading in. It's going to be a full film crew and everything. Um, it's kind of a big deal. Um, Sam is actually having this special directed by Wayne Isham or Wayne Isham. And if you don't know that name, he actually has done, um, well, most recently he did, um, who was it, uh, Neil Diamond's last tour. He filmed his. Um, he, a special that's getting ready to come out. Um, he's done Bon Jovi videos. He's done Ricky Martin. He did the In Sync video uh, where they're marionettes. I mean, he's got a long history. I know he um, even has done the Imagine Dragons video recently, I believe. So, pretty big deal. So, I'm going to try and stay out of the way. They're pretty much letting me show up when they get to open the doors and start setting up the lights and the cameras and everything. So, this should be quite an experience in many, many ways, beyond the history of the club, but just getting to see this, this like a, a filming from the ground up should be cool for you guys. Now, as most of you know, I've already done a very in-depth River Phoenix vlog, so this stop over here at the Viper Room today is not gonna be all about that, but I am gonna 
like I said, my friend Stefan was actually supposed to perform that night, and he was actually going to be part of the band that River was going to be performing in, so he gave me some pretty detailed accounts of that night, and I'm going to show you according to him. Well, there it is. The world famous Viper Room, one of the last remaining rock and roll clubs here on the Sunset Strip. And my buddy, Sam Tripoli's name up on the marquee. Let's go take a look. Now one of the reasons I love Sam the most is not only is he one of the hardest working comedians I've ever known, but he's one of the few people in comedy that will actually put people on his shows that may not have a lot of experience, but he sees in them, they have a great personality and that they're gonna go somewhere. He's actually been one of those people that will uh, know somebody who doesn't do comedy and coerce them into at least trying it. And a lot of people end up becoming comedians based off of what he's influenced them to do. So now, like I said, he's got this really great conspiracy theory podcast called Tinfoil Hat. And it's so fitting that for him to do a live comedy special, he would do it here. Out the same doors that River Phoenix came out. Well, as soon as you walk in, the stage is right here. The bar is right here. And directly across where you see the mirrors, that at one time was a dressing room slash DJ booth. And as I was described, it used to be Johnny Depp's hangout room, his VIP area. So imagine that night, 1993, October 30th, and this place is packed. And according to my friend, this is what he said. He said he was supposed to perform here that night. He said I was going to perform with Gilby Clark. He said Gilby was still pretty hot from being in Guns N' Roses. And we were going to be performing um, Surrender by Cheap Trick. And we were going to do Helter Skelter. And he said uh, basically that night... Uh, Gibby Haynes from the Butthole Surfers was performing here and Flea was in that band and Johnny Depp was also playing. It was basically a big hangout jam night and they just kept waiting and waiting downstairs for uh, for the guys to finish on stage and Stefan said, you know, we were supposed to go on next and we were basically going to be like the jam part of the band, like we were going to play well-known hits and people were going to hop up and jam and River Phoenix was going to be somebody who got up and jammed with us. And he said, but we, he said, I had been waiting all night and they just kept talking on stage. And when I just got the feeling, he said, I wasn't feeling well. And I just kept thinking that I should, uh, and actually this is from that night. He said, I just kept thinking, you can see that's Gibby Haynes right there. There's Johnny Depp, Iggy Pop. This place was packed. He said, I worked my way through to get to the bathrooms because I wanted to fix my hair. It had been so hot in here and muggy that my hair was kind of starting to fall. <laughs> Even though they did and have renovated this since the episode happened, my friend Stefan said that when he, when he was here, he came into this bathroom right here and he said, how it went, he's, he's, he said he actually went inside and he said the the window, the glass, he said he was working his way to get to the mirror. Now they've moved it and they've put the mirror and the sink and everything's here. But what he said was he said that when he came in here that night, he said the whole place was packed, including the bathrooms. And he said, I just wanted to get my hair wet because we were going to perform and I wanted to like kind of, you know, style it a little bit. And he said, I had to force my way through this part over to here. And he said, River Phoenix was, he didn't know it was River Phoenix at the time, but he said there was a guy with like three or four people around him and he kept splashing water on his face, like splashing water on his face. And he said, he looked like somebody that had just thrown up or was getting sick or overheated or something. And he said, I didn't realize it was River Phoenix at the time because he had black hair. And that is true. He had dyed his hair uh, black. I don't, I believe it was for a movie that he was finishing. And so, yeah, Stefan said he saw him in here and uh, he said, I realized that nothing was gonna happen on, on stage. They weren't gonna finish up anytime soon. So he said, from the time that I left here, I went downstairs, told Gilby, hey, I'm just gonna go home. And I actually went out the side and I'll show you guys where that side exit was. And he said, by the time I had went downstairs, told Gilby I was leaving, I didn't feel good and I didn't think we were gonna get a play. 
and had walked right down the hall out the side and up Larrabee, he said, by the time I got to the corner, River had already made his way through the club out the front door and he said, I didn't know that was him, but there was a lot of commotion going on out front. So he said, this has been remodeled since then, and this, this wasn't red tile then, the sink, the mirrors, all that stuff. He said that would have all been over here. So, yeah, this is, this is the space. This, you know, this is where that 23-year-old would have felt his life ending. Literally, he had drank a speedball, which is, basically an upper and downer mixture, and he could feel his heart stopping. His heart was slowly shutting down in this room. He came out here and actually collapsed right out here, and Stefan said, I came from this side door, and I'll walk us over and show us. He said, I had actually walked out closer to the parking lot, uh, out this door, this Viper room door right here. He said, I had a, I wasn't feeling well and I had a date and I said, you know, honey, let's get out of here. So we came out of here and he said, as I walked up Larrabee, which is what we're on now, he said to sunset, he said, right when I got to the corner, we get right here and my girl says, hey, look, somebody's uh, passed out or something on the ground. And Stefan said, I said, oh, it's probably just a homeless junkie or something, let's get out of here. And he said it was actually during that four minutes before the ambulance came and arrived right up here and the time that Joaquin would have made that, that phone call that we know. And so he said the next day I went to work, he said I worked at a stripper um, clothing store <laughs> called Playmates and a girl that I worked with said, did you hear that River Phoenix died at at the Viper room last night and Stefan said, oh my God, that's who I saw in the bathroom and that's who I saw passed out out front here. Isn't that crazy? Now those, like I said, these are not the only stories for the Viper room. I'm gonna take you back in, I'm gonna tell you a couple more. Now right here you see a liquor store and right over here is the phone booth this is where Joaquin made that call. If you saw my last vlog, if you didn't know I did another vlog, I did a pretty in-depth, long vlog on this story and basically did it all from the outside, but I did get that fact wrong. I thought that the, the old phone booth that was down there at Gil Turner's on the other side, I thought that was the phone booth, but it's actually this one. This is the one that Joaquin makes that call from where he says, my brother's ODing, he's on the ground, we don't know what's happening, we think it's Valium. And they say, well, where are you located? And they said, the Viper Room on Sunset and Larrabee. And then the, uh, it's within four minutes that the um, ambulance pulls up out front and River was, as we know, laid out right across here. There's the door and he would have came right out here. Now, most of you may know the Viper Room for, like I mentioned, the River Phoenix episode, but it's actually known for quite a few things. Bugsy Siegel used to hang out here. This used to actually be a club that he owned and ran uh, with Mickey Cohen. This also used to be a, uh, a strip club called Filthy McNasty, and if you're a fan of the band Sweet, they actually had the cover of this place, uh, or the front of this place on the cover of their album. Now, <laughs> one of the other crazy stories that's kind of associated with this is that in the 2000s, I'm gonna say allegedly, but it's pretty well documented that there was an underground uh, poker ring, celebrity poker ring that was happening here every night. It was a $50,000 buy-in and it was people supposedly, allegedly, I'm gonna say, uh, like Tobey Maguire, Ben Affleck, Leonardo DiCaprio, Matt Damon, and they would attend this and uh, reportedly win and lose a lot of money. Now people from my generation, uh, when I was in junior high, there was a band called The Counting Crows that were really big and they had a couple of hit songs called Mr. Jones and uh, their album was um, August and Everything After. 
When that band hit it big, their lead singer actually became a bartender to keep his keep his head below the clouds. And uh, he actually bartended here. Adam Duritz used to be a bartender here at the Viper Room, as well as Christina Applegate. Now Johnny Depp's not the owner now, but one of the very peculiar stories also tied to this place was that he had a business partner. And apparently the business partner at one point was trying to sue him or was coming out accusing him and they were gonna take it to court of uh, kind of embezzlement. And a few days before they were supposed to go to court, the friend disappeared. And to my knowledge, everything I read online, the friend has never come back and never been seen. And, um, and from what I understand, uh, it was a few years ago that Johnny Depp gave all his, uh, the friend's ownership or his portion of the ownership to that person's daughter. So I'm not saying anything happened, I'm just saying it's a, from what I read online, that's one of the peculiar occurrences tied to this place. And like I said, my friend being a big conspiracy theorist, it's the perfect place for him to have his show. Now I wonder, this is supposedly a very haunted place. I mean, and for everything I've told you, you can probably understand why, but it's really interesting to think of a comedy special being filmed inside here with this history, knowing that from that bathroom right there, out this door, is one of the most famous deaths in modern Hollywood history. Now my friend Stefan said how he ended up getting tangled up into the, the group here is he said that he was very good friends with Johnny Depp's roommate when they moved here from Florida. Johnny Depp actually wanted to be in a band and, uh, and had a band called The Kids when they came here and Stefan became friends with them and they actually met, he said, at the Palladium um, at that show where Johnny Depp got in trouble for apparently getting into an altercation with a woman at an Iggy Pop show. Oh, great posters. I got tape. You want tape? And now they have a camera right at the door that points right to that spot, pretty much. Now, Sam's not actually here yet. Sam's going to get here in about an hour. This is all the pre setup that goes into filming a, a comedy special. So it's going to be interesting for you guys to get to see it all happen, how it's all put together from the cameras, the chairs, the speakers, everything that's going to be laid out, and then to showtime. Now, you know how I mentioned that there was, this used to be called Filthy McNasties. There's an old photo in here, and you can see it right there. And that Gil Turner's liquor right there, it's still there. They got the poster up. Well, they don't have the glass up yet, but they've got the... Looks good. Now, even before this was Filthy McNasty's, it was also at one time known as the Melody Room. And uh, at one point, Evil Knievel used to hang out here all the time. Now that is not a vlogging camera. And this stage is also really well known, at least in my mind, because Johnny Cash gave a really incredible performance here one night. If you look it up on YouTube, you can find it. It's, uh, he was doing his American recordings and it was a pretty chilling, pretty chilling performance right there on that stage. Right now they're having a little bit of a powwow to kind of figure out how they want to lay the stage out, if they want to leave the amplifiers and things on there for a look, or if they want to remove them. So I came out here, I was going to show you, they have recently repainted, I had read online that there's this really interesting hallway art that they had done, and that it actually looked like graffiti, but what it really was, it was words from... Hunter S. Thompson. Now because Johnny Depp doesn't own this place anymore, it looks like, and it was right here, they actually right above here had words by Hunter S. Thompson going across the, the top right here, and then right past it, it said R.I.P. River. 
River Phoenix. And they had his words going up and down here, and now unfortunately it's, they've repainted over it, and I actually asked the people that are managing here, I said, you know, I, I know that the bathrooms had to have been renovated since 93. She said, well, we're getting ready to do it again, so even if they haven't been, they will be soon. Now this is actually the downstairs bar. Just to give you the full experience, this is the normal way, the way that we just walked in and came up the stairs. That's normally how they let people in and that's how they're gonna do it tonight. So people normally never come in that front door. Now when I tell you that this place is part of the Sunset Strip rock and roll history, the, the palace of what used to be the 80s and 70s Sunset Strip, I'll give you a little perspective. Right here we're still in front of the Viper Room. But if you look right there, that is the Whiskey A Go-Go. And about one block past it, you can see, if you look closely, you can see a big R. That's the Roxy, and right beside that is a rainbow-colored sign. That's the rainbow. The rainbow is where uh, Lemmy Kilmeister used to hang out almost every day when he was in Los Angeles. If he wasn't on tour, he was there. That's where Joe DiMaggio and Marilyn Monroe had their first dinner together. The Roxy, above the Roxy, is where John Belushi had his last drink at On the Rocks. The Whiskey at Go-Go, Jimi Hendrix had an apartment behind there. Uh, the original Hollywood Vampires with Brian Wilson and Three Dog Night and Alice Cooper and Frank Zappa, they, they all would have met in the upstairs backstage area there. I mean, it's this, the history up and down this part of the Sunset Strip is absolutely incredible. So I hope this vlog hasn't been too confusing. I'm really trying to give you an inside scoop of not only Sam's comedy special, but the whole River Phoenix tragedy, as well as a little bit backstory to the club. Now, one other odd thing about this club that I love that I wanted to tell you is that, guess who the very first band to perform here was in 1993. When Johnny Depp bought this club, it was Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Johnny Depp had just been in the Great White Open video and Tom Petty was the first performer to perform here. Pretty cool. Now I'll trip you out a little bit more. You can even see it right over there. That's where the infamous Tower Records of Los Angeles was. It closed down years ago and then it turned into something else and then as a pop-up they turned it into Tower Records and they've just kept it there. Now th another crazy part of this area is that right across the street from Tower, right over here where this Chase Bank is, that used to be Tower Video and um, you had some rock stars like Axl Rose was the manager at Tower Video at one point. Uh, I believe Rivers Cuomo from Weezer worked at Tower Video. He worked, at, yeah, Tower Video, not Tower Records. So he worked there, Slash worked there. I believe, um, I believe that the original drummer of Guns N' Roses, I believe, I believe he did. I believe Steven did as well. And even though it was never really my thing, I should mention that the Pussycat Dolls got started here. They had a residency here performing, I believe, on Monday nights. You could sit over here and operate from there, right? What? No, now right now what they're trying to figure out is hey, the set hey, design, how they want it to look, do they want these colored lights, do they want different colored lights, and do they want to leave the amplifiers on here as hey, kind of a, a scene setting, hey, or will that check. be a distraction for the comedy? Those are the kind of things that you always have to take into consideration. Hey, Anytime there's anything on stage, it could be a yep, distraction. Yep, they're doing a little bit of sound check right now. This is one of the cameras. There's hey, one of the cameras. Hey, I believe they're check. actually doing one, three two. cameras for this. Hey, hey, Viper Room, check one, two. Oh yeah, they're making it official now. And look who's here, Mr. Sam Tripoli. Fresh haircut and all. Congrats, buddy. No, nope, nobody's with me on that one. Sam, Sam's uh, doing a little bit of a you guys don't like microphone Sam? test. <laughs> I make one call, nobody ever gets an Uber again in LA, okay? Everybody's walking their ass to LAX. Of the devil. All right. Nope. Just one guy enjoyed that joke. That's it. Huh? Yeah. I'm in the conspiracies, bro. Right? Which is basically the equivalent of being the cat lady now. Right? Conspiracy theorists. We people think we're crazy and we scare children. Like the other day, I posted a picture of my dog. First comment was, "Why is your dog so fat?" Uh, cause I'm fat. 
Who wants a dog that's in better shape than anybody? They make us fight with each other. We're fighting over Hillary and Trump, and that's all we're doing. Uh, okay, okay, that's a good sign you're not doing well when the sound guy says enough, okay? Now, I don't know exactly which side of the stage that would have been on. Usually, I believe Flea is on this side of the stage, but part of the story that I had always heard was that it was during a break and River walked up to the side of the stage and said, hey, when do I get a play or when can I play? And that's when Flea said, I don't see it happening, buddy. So I could be wrong about that, but that's what I've always heard. So you have to imagine which, you know, here are the stairs of the stage. So it kind of makes you feel like would have probably happened right over here, anywhere on this edge of the stage, right? So Sam's got a little bit of a cheat sheet here for his rehearsal. And here you can kind of just see what he, you know, it's not a great view, but you can see what his view is gonna be tonight. He's gonna have those spotlights right in his eyes, so that's part of it. I don't know which one I'm getting, but apparently I've been put in a VIP booth. So my personal vote is I think they should keep the amplifiers on there. I think it makes it look cool because we're in a rock and roll club and they've kind of been on the edge about it, but I think Sam just said he he likes the amps too, so they're probably going to keep them. I think they should. <laughs> That's already funny. It's great, dude. It's a classic. Dude, the second half is just well, chaos. This is kind of cool for me because I actually get to watch a big time director kind of showing what you do and what you don't do. He's kind of giving direction. It's pretty cool. So this director also did the Bon Jovi, um, It's My Life, he did Living on a Prayer, um, he did the Metallica, Wherever I May Roam, Sad But True, pretty much the Black Album, he did their live symphonic video, he did the uh, Apocalypse Tour video for Weird Al, he did um, I Want It That Way, I mean he's done a lot, he even did a music video for Michael Jackson in 2011. And he also did Motley Crue, Home Sweet Home, Smoking in the Boys Room, Girls, 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 the Pretty in Pink song from Psychedelic Furs. Isn't that crazy that he is doing a comedy special? So now they're just having a powwow, a director's and crew powwow, getting the last finishing touches ready. Look at this, we pretty much have it set up. We pretty much know what it's gonna look like. It's greatness. Look at this, we're back in Video Village. You can see what all the cameras. These are all different cameras. That's, a that's lot the of one that's hair. gonna be on Sam. Do we want everyone on their cameras? I'm just looking at like I kind of set up camp over here so that I can listen to the directions that Wayne, the director, is giving to everyone because I'm kind of trying to learn how he's setting up these cameras since he's working with so many cameras. And if you look closely right there, it says, River, I will forever love you. Right here in the bathroom. Well, they are just about ready to open the doors, and that's where our vlog will end. Alright gang, we're going to call it a night, and if you want to see any of the comedy or any of the special, you're just going to have to buy it when it comes out or see it wherever it's aired. Um, I wanted to thank Brenda Cunningham, Karen Halstead, Nola Deej, uh, Gina Allen, Thank you very much for becoming Patreons. Everyone else, I'll see y'all tomorrow. Have a great night. Good. Bye.